Let's see if I can still remember how to do this. <laughs> and welcome back to Inside Number 23, my podcast which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the craftiest life possible. I am going to do my introductory spiel very quickly. You can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Miss Lavelli. We also have a Ravelry group for the podcast, which you can find by heading over to Ravelry, going to the groups tab and searching inside number 23 there. You can find all show notes for the podcast, anything that I talk about in today's episode in the down bar, which you'll find just down here and if you want to contact me regarding anything to do with the podcast please feel free to drop me an email my email is katie at inside number 23.com and I will endeavor to get back to you as soon as I possibly can Whew. okay so I'm going to start this episode off this week with a Hello, how are you? I am well. I hope you are well as well. <laughs> Hello to any of my long-term viewers. I'm sure that you've been wondering where I have been and if this is the first time that you're checking out the podcast this week. Firstly, thank you so much for coming to spend a little bit of crafty time with me. And secondly, this is a little bit of a different episode this week because I've been on a hiatus for over a month. It has been over a month since my last podcast episode went live. And so this feels a little peculiar and um, I feel a little bit out of sorts for that. So apologies if things are a little bit odd. Um, but yes, you guys, for those of you who are wondering, I have not vanished off the face of the earth. I haven't um, had some terrible fate before me, which means that I'm incapable of ever doing a podcast again. I am back, I'm here, and I'm so, so thrilled to be here with you this week. I cannot even tell you. Now, I am going to start this week's episode with a little explanation uh, briefly as to what's been going on, what's been keeping me away from all of you lovely, lovely people who I have missed so, so much. Um, but if you would prefer to head straight to a bit of knitting and crafting content, content. I do timestamp kind of each section of the podcast and I put the information about that down in the um, the down box, down in the down box down below which is where I put all of the show notes for this podcast. So please feel free um, if you would not like a kind of health update and all of that type of thing um, to skip through to a more convenient section. Um, I do have a fair amount of lovely things to talk about this week, which I'm super excited to share with you. So yay, <laughs> let's just crack on, shall we? It's been a while, I know, and my online presence hasn't been particularly great over the past month. I have been almost entirely offline and I know that that has caused some worry for quite a lot of you. Um, I'd like to start off by just saying thank you, thank you for your patience, thank you for your understanding about me not being around. I haven't felt pressured to come back, I haven't had any kind of hounding with people wanting to know everything that's going on and, and that's been really really lovely. Um, so thank you so much um, for all of you guys for just as always, the amount of love and support that you show me is incredible. Um, I think you're all wonderful and yeah, I hope you can tell that I am very excited to be back with you again. But basically, um, I feel like I should kind of fill you in, fill you in <laughs> on what's been going on for the past month. Um, for those of you who have checked out my previous episode, you would know that at the end of um, my last episode, I kind of talked about the fact that I was getting very, very busy at work, um, doing lots of different events, having lots of different um, travel and things like that, and um, that I might not podcast the week after. And that basically turned into this um, indeterminate amount of time that I wasn't with you guys. Um, long story short, I was working incredibly hard at work. Um, I was utterly exhausted by the amount of stuff that I was having to do. And it basically turned out that that kind of tiredness and exhaustion turned into almost kind of extreme fatigue. And I was just unable to pretty much do anything 
Um, I want to start by saying I am absolutely fine. Um, there is nothing to worry about whatsoever. I am incredibly well taken care of, both in my professional life by the people that I work with and in my personal life at home. Um, I have been spoilt rotten by my parents, by my husband, by my lovely, lovely dog, Rolly. Um, I've been very, very well taken care of. And the reason that I haven't been around is kind of twofold. Firstly, the kind of extreme fatigue that I was experiencing meant that I was so tired, the only thing that I could really do when I wasn't having to do something like work, for example, was lie flat out on my sofa and almost just stare blankly into space. I didn't really even have the energy to speak to anybody, to watch TV, to kind of engage in any way, let alone be in any way creative and that's how I really knew that something wasn't right because as a as a person who's always wanting to do things and make things and if anything I push myself to have way too many projects on the go at any one time when you just have no urge to do anything creative um, whatsoever you usually know something's gone a little bit awry hasn't it um, but the kind of the second aspect of that, so the tiredness obviously prevented me from, from wanting to do anything, let alone kind of sit down and record and then edit a whole podcast episode. That just felt like a monumental thing that I just couldn't even think about doing. Um, the second part of it was, because I wasn't wanting to be creative in any way, I've pretty much done nothing over the past month, believe it or not. Um, I've done a couple of bits and pieces, but when it comes to my creative life, there has not been much creative juice flowing. So even if I was in the mood to record an episode, I wouldn't really have had anything to share with you because just nothing. These hands, these hands have been making nothing over the past month or so. I am feeling a lot better than, than I was just a few weeks ago and it's, it's very encouraging that I'm, I'm having more energy and I feel more myself. But one thing I knew that I needed to be able to be um, whilst I was going through this is I had to cut myself some slack and be kind to myself. I can't tell you the amount of times I started getting the podcast set up, started to write notes, desperately wanted to reconnect with you guys and record, but it just couldn't happen. It was really distressing and I was pushing so hard to be kind of out of this period of exhaustion or whatever um, that I was actually probably causing myself a little bit more harm than just letting myself rest. So happily I decided to kind of get over myself a little bit. I allowed myself to take some time off. I'm sorry that it's been this long. It was never intended to be this long at all but um, like I said it's been amazing that you guys have waited and I couldn't appreciate that more so thank you. In terms of future episodes I'm hoping that this will be the start of um, a regular podcast again. I cannot guarantee that it's going to be on a weekly basis just because I don't want to kind of jump into everything full throttle and um, ruin all of the hard work that I've put in over the past month to try and get better but um, either it might translate into slightly shorter episodes or episodes maybe fortnightly for a little while but rest assured inside number 23 is not going anywhere um, I have missed you all so much and I cannot tell you how happy I am to finally feel like I'm in a place where I can connect with you all again and have a chat with you. And um, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. I just might be a little bit um, on the absent side for a little while, but fingers crossed, this is the start of all good things to come. And yeah, that's where I'm at. And I think it's, I think it's about time that we crack on with a bit of crafty content, don't you? <laughs> Well, I'm going to start off this week with talking about what I'm wearing, um, that old chestnut, uh, because I'm actually particularly happy with my outfit um, today. This is all stuff that you've seen before, but sometimes you know you put on an outfit and it just makes a huge difference to how you feel. When I've been kind of lying on the sofa for weeks on end and feeling like utter pants, um, you just feel like 
you're not yourself, that you're letting yourself go. It's really, really horrible. And I find sometimes putting on a really, really nice outfit that makes you feel good can just make the world of difference. And this is one of those outfits for me. It's two of my favorite handmade, handmade pieces that I've ever made. Um, of course, I have a version of the Robe Bleuet by Deer and Doe, which is underneath. It's a little shirt dress, and this is my cat version. As you can see, it has little embroidered cats on the collar. I actually completed this dress for um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year, um, more on Edinburgh Yarn Festival in a little bit, and I paired it with one of my favourite sweaters of all time. This is my first ever Michelle Wong pattern. Um, this is her wicker work pullover, knitted out of Quince & Co Lark, one of my favourite yarns in the honey colourway, and I just, I just love it. And it's warm and snuggly, which has been perfect for the weather this time of year, because in the UK we've been having some ridiculous weather over the past few weeks. It was snowing, and then it started warming up, and then it snowed again, and now it's been raining for the past however many days, and it's finally started to clear up a little bit, which is great, because this is actually um, East weekend that I am recording so fingers crossed we'll have a little bit of blue sky and a little bit of brightness so we can enjoy the bank holiday weekend at least a little bit but of course in the UK it's notorious for raining on um, bank holiday weekends so it just happens but yes that is what I'm wearing today and I, I just love it it makes me feel confident and happy and um, it makes me feel more myself which is great after having all of this time of feeling basically like an inanimate blob that can't do anything so <laughs> yay um, in terms of what I'm wearing, I actually want to do a little shout out to another um, me made object that I'm not currently wearing, but I have been wearing an awful lot since I shared it with you last. I believe I was wearing it in my last episode, but it is my forest cardigan. Now this was a finished object, like I said, that I think I shared with you either in the last episode I recorded or the episode before. Um, it was my first finished object of my first garment finished object, I believe, of this year. And um, I really, really love it. It's knitted out of um, Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Tweed in the um, Autumn Heather colorway, and I love it. And I must say, it's a raglan cardigan, and I was talking about how I was a little, little bit disappointed that it was kind of gaping and causing this bagginess around the armpits, and I was worried that that would make me not want to wear it. And um, a couple of you commented that that's just the nature of raglan cardigans and the way that they sit they tend to have this slightly um, odd shape to them um, just because of the way that the the sleeves are constructed so thank you for letting me know about that guys I will bear that in mind with future projects but this cardigan I have to say is probably becoming the most well-worn me made object that I have ever completed um, I wear it all the time I can throw it on over any outfit it's kept me warm and snuggly um, I wear it in the office I'll sometimes put it on over pajamas at home and it's just already um, kind of paid for itself I guess in terms of how much I've worn it and I really, really, really love it. So a little shout out to the forest cardigan again, and just all of those fears that I had that I wouldn't wear it were obviously completely just stupid because I wear it all the time and I can't recommend it enough. And I need more oversized cardigans in my future, for sure. So enough about what I am wearing today, and let's crack on with a little bit of knitting content. As I said, my knitting mojo has kind of left the building, and it is still on a bit of a hiatus, but luckily I do have a couple of things to share with you, mostly because um, I managed to finish a sweater that I've been working on for a very, very long time, and I'm very excited to be able to share it with you as a finished object this week which is pretty awesome considering the, the amount of knitting time that I've done <laughs> since I spoke to you last is just, it's abysmal. I really, 
I have to kind of let myself have a get out of jail free card for it and kind of forgive myself for it but it really isn't great and I don't, I don't feel happy about um, the lack of knitting in my life which I think to be honest is probably a good thing because hopefully that means fingers crossed that the mojo may be on its way back I really hope so because my goodness um, spending time with people at Edinburgh and just catching up on podcasts recently I can't help but be inspired by what everybody else is knitting so um, it would be helpful if I could actually um, get up some oomph to do some knitting myself but enough babbling on um, let me share with you this finished object now this will be something that my long-term viewers will recognize because this yarn has actually had a couple of different um, journeys out of the stash and then being ripped back and then being made into other things but I wanted to finish this sweater specifically for Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I wanted to do that because um, I knew that the lovely lovely dyer of this yarn was going to be vending and um, I wanted to share my completed garment with her so let me just show you this and it's probably going to blow out the camera because of the color but I finished my Chana sweater <laughs> so this sweater is knit out of the wool kitchen yarn this gorgeous yarn is um, in her champagne supernova colorway and as you can see, it's just this beautiful, creamy, natural DK, which is a BFL DK, pretty much my favorite yarn base at the moment. And it has all of these incredible speckles of bright multicolors. It's almost like um, Funfetti, I believe, is what you guys have in the States. Um, Funfetti cake mix, um, and I felt like a cupcake wearing this really really did without a shadow of a doubt and I desperately wanted to get this finished in time for Edinburgh Yarn Festival firstly because I didn't really have any new um, finished objects to wear at the festival when I was there and last year I had managed to crank out a fair few projects and I had some lovely things to wear and I felt like I was kind of letting myself down a little bit because I was just not making anything so I wanted to get this finished and it was almost entirely done so it didn't take much work in order to get it done and um, you may or may not remember that this originally started its life, this yarn, as a Netherton cardigan which is a beautiful pattern. I realised after completing the body of the knitting of that cardigan that it just wasn't going to be flattering for my body type uh, which was quite disappointing because I bought this yarn specifically with this project in mind and put a lot of hours of work into it and it was a real shame that I thought it wasn't, it just wasn't looking right so I ripped the entire thing back and I found the Chana sweater pattern and the one thing that I realized was that I didn't actually have enough yardage to be able to complete this project um, using the yarn that I had bought for the cardigan because it's relatively long it's got one of these cute high low hems on it as well so it's slightly longer at the back than it is at the front um, and I contacted Helen, who is the wonderful dyer behind the wool kitchen, and I asked if she had any more of this colourway in stock, um, in particular if she was going to have the, the same dye lot that I had purchased at Pomfest. And she, because she is an utter just glorious human being gifted me um, some additional skeins of this colourway so that I could complete this jumper and um, I just really wanted to kind of thank her by showing her the finished garment and having it be my official Edinburgh Art Festival sweater of 2018. So this was what I wore um, to the festival. I paired it as well with um, one of my um, Me Made shirts, which is um, flamingo print. So it looked absolutely adorable, the little flamingos poking over the top of this sweater. And I really, really love it. One thing I would say, I have not properly blocked this sweater yet. I did a basic steam block on it, um, which seems to have worked out quite well, but um, it really is in need of a good, like, full wet blocking, just because it is supposed to be um, a little bit more oversized than it currently is. Um, and I want to kind of get as much length and width out of that oversizedness a technical term <laughs> as I possibly can as it is at the moment it fits nicely but I think after a good wet block it will fit perfectly so I'm going to um, put some time aside 
possibly this afternoon to get this soaked and then just just blocking out but oh my goodness this yarn you guys I cannot recommend the wool kitchen yarn more highly um I mean obviously my experiences with Helen were an utter delight she's a wonderful wonderful human being and just a joy to kind of chat with and speak to but her colorways are amazing and the quality of this BFL DK is just wonderful there's a reason why bfl is really my my favorite yarn to work with and that's just because i find it slightly heavier than merino and slightly more um rustic it's by all means not a rustic yarn whatsoever it's still very very soft and cozy but i feel if you've knitted a lot with merino based yarn and then you make the move to bfl you'll you'll realize straight away that for garments in particular, I think it's preferable um, because it's not going to pill as much, it's more hard wearing and it's so warm and snuggly and plus who wouldn't want to look like a funfetti cake all the time because I really do. Maybe it's just me, but yes, one finished object. So I feel like I haven't let you guys down too much because I do have a finished object, which also has a lovely bit of texture on it. I do, I was I was stroking this sweater the entire time that I was wearing it just because that um, interrupted kind of um, garter stitch pattern all the way down the front is just joyous to stroke. It's, it's wonderful. But yes, I'm very happy with it. And um, it was just a real treat to be able to, to go and share it with Helen at the festival as well. In terms of other things that I've been knitting on, um, to be honest, there hasn't been a huge amount done on really anything else. I have been doing a little bit of work on my crochet granny stripe blanket. That's been a really nice kind of brainless project that I can pick up whenever I feel um, that I want to kind of do something with my hands. But to be honest, I haven't really wanted to do something with my hands creatively for quite a while. The one thing I did do is I wound all of my mini skeins into a magic ball, which was very, very satisfying. And that does make um, working on the granny stripe blanket even better because because I just hook away for hours, well not for hours because I can't do anything for hours at the moment, but for a little bit at a time I'll hook away and I won't have to worry about changing skeins or having lots of mini skeins around. I literally just pick up the blanket with the little magic ball attached to it and we're good to go. I do have one new cast on however, which is kind of bridging the gap between my not wanting to work on anything and I'm um, trying to kickstart my knitting mojo back into life and this project excuse me I've got the hiccups <laughs> um this project was actually inspired by a wonderful lady who I met at Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year and that is lovely Emily of um <laughs> Arctic Knitting and Arctic Yarns. Now Emily was kind enough to actually gift me some beautiful skeins of yarn at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. One thing that I noticed when I met her, other than the fact that she's just a lovely, lovely person, is she was wearing the most beautiful shawl and I gravitated towards it straight away because of the colour. It was this beautiful golden mustard colour and with a contrast white and I said to her, oh my goodness this is beautiful and she said, well it's actually one of my designs and so when I got home I looked up her designs and she has a fabulous selection of different designs that she has available on Ravelry. I will link all of those um, and her shop down below but the one that she had been wearing was called Midnight Sun. It's a shawl, it's a triangular shawl which is one of my favourite shapes of shawl even though I'm not a massive shawl knitter and I thought this would be a really really lovely project to work on as something to kind of get me back into knitting because to start off with it's incredibly simple and not very taxing on the old brain and I've just noticed that I, I stopped mid row so I'm just going to sort out my yarn on here so that I don't drop any stitches but I, um, I cast this on um, about a week ago and you'll be able to tell <laughs> from this why um, uh, I don't have much to share with you because this is like a week's worth of knitting. It's very little, um, but it's it's good. It's progress and I'm happy with it. But um, I'm just at the start of it so far, so you can see kind of the little triangle starting of the shawl, but is this colour not wonderful? Um, I actually am using some of my Twisted Finch yarn that was um, given to me by lovely Nathan when I met him at Pom Fair. so thank you for this Nathan, I absolutely adore your yarn, and um, I 
started to work on this and basically I'm just increasing stitches at the moment for this lovely um, triangular shawl. It will have a little bit more interest when I get to the edging but for now it's just very satisfying to work on something that is not especially mentally taxing um, <laughs> because that's about all my brain can manage at the moment is something uh, slightly more simple and this also builds up, so the the further along that you get with the pattern, the more complicated it gets because obviously it has this lovely edging detail on it. And I'm just really excited to have this in my wardrobe as well because I think it will be a really nice light shawl kind of scarf to wear um, in spring and um, early autumn when it's kind of too warm to wear one of my my massive shawls that I love like the the void shawl which is which is knit in worsted weight um, but this yarn is just the most beautiful MCN yarn and I love the colour. When I saw um, Emily's version of this I automatically thought about this um, Twisted Finch yarn that I had caked up for, you may or may not remember, I was going to make a kind of graphic um, scarf project over Christmas but that never panned out so um, I think that this works really really well with this shawl mostly because it's really just focusing on how beautiful that colour is is that not gorgeous? So I'm really, really happy with that so far. And it's a nice gentle project. It's not particularly taxing or demanding, um, but I know it's going to be something that I will very much enjoy wearing when it's finished. And um, and yeah, it's just, it's a kind project. This project is kind to me. It doesn't ask too much. And um, yeah, it grows and looks beautiful and I'm very happy to use the yarn. So, um, so yeah, check out Emily's Ravelry store. She is awesome. And um, I'm a very, very big fan of both her yarn and her beautiful patterns. <laughs> So I feel like this would actually be a good time to kind of swerve into topics and talks about Edinburgh Yarn Festival um, because I've been mentioning it a fair amount um, on the podcast so far, kind of in passing. And yes, I was at Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. You will have noticed, obviously, because of my hiatus, my being away, um, I haven't put together an Edinburgh Yarn Festival vlog or a specific Edinburgh Yarn Festival episode this year. Um, and that's because I did take my camera with me, thinking I'll try and vlog if I can but I was utterly exhausted. I went to the festival for one day this year, I just went on the Friday and the rest of the time I spent with Emrys um, in and around Edinburgh which was lovely but um, I just wasn't in any fit state to um, kind of <laughs> record what was going on and be coherent. Um, the festival did really take it out of me this year mostly because um, I wasn't entirely feeling myself and um, I do think to a certain extent it did affect my enjoyment of it, which was a shame, but it was so lovely to see everybody, um, to make contact with so many of my friends who I don't get to see on a super regular basis. Um, but I don't actually have a massive haul to share with you when it comes to the Yarn Festival because I purchased a total of one thing at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Yes, again, this is how you know that you're feeling slightly under the weather and things aren't quite right when everybody else is leaving with a suitcase full of goodies and you buy one thing. But I just wasn't in the right frame of mind to buy. I think when you're feeling a bit out of sorts and not yourself, it's sometimes a good idea to take a step back and realise that any purchases that you make will probably be panic purchases is because you have FOMO, you have the fear of missing out, you want to compete with everybody else and I decided that that just wasn't going to be something that I would do. So I purchased one thing that I had already planned on buying and when I saw it at the festival I knew that it had to come home with me and I'm incredibly happy with the purchase I made because it is the new book by Susan Crawford which is the Vintage Shetland Project and if you know anything about me and my podcast you will know I'm a massive fan of Susan Crawford, of everything that she does. I have pretty much every publication that she has ever written and um, so this one obviously had to come home with me. I also had the pleasure of actually meeting Susan at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and just to tell her what a privilege it was to meet her in real life and how inspirational I think that she is. And um, it, was, it was probably the top moment, I would say, of being at Edinburgh. That and um, meeting Andrea Maori as well, which 
just so many inspirational, wonderful people in that place. But yes, I am super excited about cracking this open and giving it a proper read. Um, for those of you who don't necessarily know Susan Crawford, she specialises in taking vintage knitting patterns and making them usable and approachable for a modern day audience. So using different kinds of yarns, um, adapting the patterns so that they are multi-sized and just creating beautiful works of art. This book is so much more than just a pattern book. The, the knowledge and the history in here surrounding um, Shetland and all of the, the different um, techniques and everything that's been used throughout history and that is still used today is just so exciting. I must admit, of all of the projects, <laughs> this is this is the one that's been calling to me the most so far. But it's just full of beautiful colour work, gorgeousness, which I will hopefully be sharing with you a little bit more in the future once I've had a time to properly read it and maybe even make some plans to cast on something lovely from it. But it is a pretty massive tome. It's a heavy, heavy book, but um, it's worth it. I think if you are a fan of colour work knitting, of vintage knitting and just beautiful coffee table knitting books, this is definitely one to add to the collection. So that was my scrummy purchase that I made at Edinburgh and I'm more than happy with it, to be perfectly honest. While we're talking about lovely goodies, I have actually received some wonderful things um, through Owl Post recently that I want to share with you. Again, this isn't everything that has come through Owl Post. Um, this episode would end up being a manic, manic, huge, massive beast, and I would not have the time to edit it if I showed everything. But um, rest assured, like I said, with um, with gifts and things like that, I will be doing my best to share things bit by bit over the next few episodes to come. But I did want to share some things that have been sent by a few lovely, lovely people. Um, first of all, I actually met up with my darling friends, um, Amy of the Stranded Podcast and Stranded Dye Works, and Nikki of TM possibilities last weekend and it was so lovely to see them and spend time with them I just adore them they are the most beautiful human beings and um, Amy actually brought me um, a surprise gift of her new colorway this is house red and I'm a little bit obsessed with it it's her paradise um, fingering base which is her merino cashmere nylon base it's utterly beautiful and this color is just life. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it just yet. Um, it's such a special colourway. It's her proper kind of burgundy colour and I love it. I absolutely adore it and um, I'm just very excited to find um, a special project for it to be because I love Amy's yarn almost as much as I love Amy. So thank you Amy for this lovely lovely squidge to come and live with me. I love it so much. Um, I've also been lucky enough to be sent some yarn by the incredible Trey Liz. <laughs> Trey Liz, who is a fabulous dyer, and um, she has asked me to test knit um, a collaboration that she is doing. I believe... Um, her and Chili Knits are dyeing some yarn for this beautiful, beautiful pattern. Um, I can't actually give you any details about the pattern just yet because it is a test knit and that is actually the other project that I have been working on. So I was telling a bit of a naughty fib earlier when I said I wasn't working on anything else but it doesn't really count because I can't show it to you yet because it's all top secret. But I can show you the colourway that it's going to be knit up in. Um, this is Requiem for a Dream and if you've never had had any of um, Liz's yarn before. Oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. It's this beautiful variegated grey with little pops of bright colour in it and it is stunning. It's so vibrant and yet so kind of, it's a really good neutral as well, which I really appreciate. I think that her yarn is absolutely stunning. So thank you so much for this. But because she is very cheeky and naughty, she couldn't help herself. She ended up popping in a couple of other beautiful skeins of yarn along with the things for the test knit. And she has sent me Do You Trust Me? and Hakuna Matata, which of course are Disney themed yarns. I believe this one is Aladdin themed and obviously this one's going to be Lion King themed. And I love these. I think that they are utterly gorgeous and 
my goodness she is one clever lady dyeing these is she not now with these i think that they will probably end up being um a prize for either a giveaway or for the wong along or another knit along possibly later this year but oh i love them i love them so much so thank you so much and i will obviously pop her details down below if you want to go and check out her shop which you absolutely should I have one more lovely bit of owl post to share with you before I move on to a little bit of sewing and um, this yarn was sent to me by Hell Candy, which is a really really fabulous yarn dyeing shop. I can't speak. They're a great yarn dyer, indie yarn dyer and oh my word their yarn is incredible. It's particularly exciting because they're based in the UK and I love finding out about new UK dyers that I haven't actually used their yarn before and they specifically wanted to send me this yarn. Um, it's DK which I am so excited about just because I am really really loving working with slightly heavier weight yarns at the moment which is super useful because obviously we're going to be moving into the warm weather soon and all I want to do is cast on with DK and worsted weight yarns and heavy weight yarns but what can you do but she sent me this colorway this is oh my dog and it reminds me so much of Rolly. the colorway is perfect for kind of a little puggy colorway and I love it it's mostly kind of natural but it also has all these lovely speckles of browns blacks gray a little bit of yellow in there and it's beautiful it's almost like a snowy owl colorway as well which I love and she sent me two skeins of that for me and I couldn't be happier so thank you so much but additionally she also popped in a couple of other yummy skeins of yarn which are just as incredible ta-da don't you just love all of these bright pops of color don't they make you happy this one is floribunda I hope I pronounced that right floribunda and this is confetti and oh, this one's floribunda with the kind of neon greens and speckled pink and purple. It's just fabulous and how beautiful does that look in the skein. And then confetti is just a beautiful mishmash of highlighter neons and speckles and it looks like looks like a beautiful neon unicorn with little pops of like bright orange in there as well it's stunning so thank you so much for sending those to me again these two skeins much as I would love to keep them for myself will most likely end up being in either a giveaway or a knit along prize um but yes they are absolutely stunning and oh I just want to just want to roll in all this beautiful yarn although obviously I will not do that with skeins that I'm going to be sending for giveaways and things that wouldn't be great would it <laughs> here have this yarn that I've rolled in anyway I'm getting off topic um I want to talk about a couple of things that I've been working on um from a sewing perspective because before I kind of went into hibernation I had managed to finish um a couple of sewing projects and um, I'm very excited to share those with you um this one is kind of non-surprising because of the amount of these that I've made recently I finished another Clio dress. Um, this is a pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. This will be my third version of this dress and I love it. It's a beautiful pinafore dress. I do it at the mini length so it ends kind of just above the knee um, and this fabric is this beautiful kind of brushed stretch cotton um, which I bought from Fabric Godmother. It also has a um, pocket on the front because I love the pocket on the front um, and in order to make the fabric kind of um, go as far as it could I used just a black cotton for the interfacing on this because I only ended up purchasing I think a metre of this fabric from Fabric Godmother um, and I love it. It's definitely becoming one of the most well-worn pieces in my wardrobe. I love the um, the convenience of these pinafore dresses um, that they look very cute but they're very very easy to wear and they're comfortable um, and I just love these these colours as well of this floral print. I'm very 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 happy with it and um, yeah so that was one of the first things that I finished. 
The other exciting thing that's happened in Tilly and the Buttons world recently, um, for those of you who don't know, I do work for Tilly of Tilly and the Buttons um, in the London office. And the thing that we've been most excited, but it's also been taking up the majority of our time recently, has been the release of Tilly's new book, which is this lovely little guy here. This is Stretch. Um, which is Tilly's new book. This is the second book that she has ever released and the tagline is basically make yourself comfortable because every single pattern included in this book is made with knit fabrics as opposed to woven fabrics. So everything in here is super comfy and super stretchy, obviously, hence the name. Um, but it's also very, very on trend and not kind of dowdy or... I suppose when some people think about stretchy clothes they automatically think of like elasticated waistbands and things like that which are fine but you won't find that type of look in here it's all very beautiful crafted chic looks and I just love everything um, in this book. Um, I've actually completed my first project from this book already which is just hanging up here so I'm just going to grab it. I completed this for the book launch party so that I would have something lovely to wear. This is the Joni dress. So this is the dress that's actually pictured on the front of the book. It's the book, the book, it's the dress that Tilly is wearing. Um, and it's kind of the, the fanciest dress, I guess, from, from the book. And I made it out of this crepe jersey with um, all of these lovely little bugs and snakes and flowers on it. It has this nice twist at the front and it's just a beautiful thing to wear. I really, really love it. It makes me feel very fancy, but it's also kind of deceptively easy to wear because it's super stretchy and you just throw it on and go and then you feel really fancy when you're wearing it. It's great. Um, it also has some really nice details in terms of um, the way that it's finished in the way that it's constructed and this kind of twist front looks like it would be very complicated to do but it's actually very very easy um, to put together so I finished this dress and I wore it to um, our book launch party which was very very successful and um, so yeah that's the other finished object that I currently have so guys, I actually want to finish off this episode this week with a couple of super happy things that have been making me feel so much better over the past couple of weeks. I've been really trying to spend a lot of my time focusing on self-care and the things that do make me happy rather than focusing on the fact that I am not able to do so many of the things that have brought me so much happiness in the past. Not being able to craft and be creative can be incredibly distressing and I decided that rather than focusing on how much kind of sadness that was bringing me, I would focus all my attention on the few things that really were making me happy in this rather kind of bleak time, I guess. And I just wanted to share a couple of those with you guys. Now, the first one that I want to start off with is actually a brand new podcast on YouTube. And it's one that I've been waiting for for a while. It's one that I've been excited for for a while. And I'm so happy that she has finally bit the bullet and um, started video podcasting and that is lovely lovely Katie Green whom I am happy to be able to call my friend. I met Katie through the podcasting community. You may know her from several issues of um, Pom Pom magazine where she's done beautiful illustrations um, in those. I also reviewed her graphic novel on this channel and she now works at Blacker Yarn so you may have seen her at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival at the Blacker Yarns booth. She is a wonderful human being and her podcast is an absolute joy. Um, it's the Green Bean podcast. I'll obviously put the links down below so that you can check it out. And so far she has two different episodes on there. And she talks about her knitting project, her sewing and also her drawing, which is just so inspirational. And I must say, Katie's podcast it was like food for the soul over the past few weeks. It was so wonderful to be able to spend a little bit of time with her and her lovely dog Jack and just soak up the 
the calmness and just the beauty of everything that she does. Um, if I'm talking about being inspired by people within the community, Katie is a massive inspiration to me. So I'd very, very much recommend that you check out her podcast, filled with beautiful things, but also just, just food for the soul. So thank you so much, Katie, for everything that you do. And I just think you're wonderful. A couple of other little bits and pieces, a little bit of um, earworm for you. Um, it's not one song, it's a whole album because I am utterly and completely obsessed with the soundtrack to The Greatest Showman at the moment. Um, it's been a while since we've talked about films on this channel with, with Emrys. He does hope to come back sometime soon to talk about some films and things, but The Greatest Showman was without a doubt one of the best films that I have seen in, in a long time and probably far and away my favourite film of last year. I know that it's not perfect, I know that it's not a realistic representation of the people who are in it or of that time, but I can't help myself. It makes me happy in my very soul and the music I think is wonderful. On down days I have listened to that soundtrack up to five times in a day on repeat and I just love it. I think it's wonderful and very excitingly they have recently released the album on LP which I purchased and it arrived yesterday and so I now have a beautiful record of the Greatest Showman soundtrack to be able to play on my record player and just enjoy the entire thing. It's so wonderful and I very much recommend that you check that out as well. I have two more things um, that I think might make you guys happy. <laughs> they certainly made me happy. The first is a book slash audiobook. Um, <laughs> I have been much more likely to listen to audiobooks than read physical books recently for obvious reasons when you're very tired um, actually kind of looking at things and reading words can be quite demanding and I find audiobooks kind of a nice balm for the brain when you're feeling that exhausted um, and the book that I absolutely adored recently um, was The Power by Naomi Alderman and before you ask, this isn't a self-help book. I know that there is a self-help book that's also called The Power, but this is not a self-help book. This is actually um, a book set in a dystopian future where women have discovered that they have the power to control and harness electricity through their hands. And I know that that sounds a little bit weird and far-fetched, but believe me, this book is incredible. It starts to, within its narrative, challenge our ideas on gender, our ideas on feminism, our ideas on masculinity, our, our ideas on the structure of the world based on how men are and how women are, and how introducing something like this can change things and it isn't just a kind of rah-rah feminism book which um, <laughs> I know that a lot of you um, would relate to that anyway but it looks at not just men and women but just humanity and how we react to each other how we behave to each other and how imbalances of power between the sexes can actually be negative regardless of where that power lies. A little disclaimer for this book, there are a lot of swears in it so if you're not interested in books that have kind of strong language you may want to steer clear and it does have some pretty um, violent sections as well and I know that that's not for everybody so if if you know if that's yourself then do steer clear I wouldn't want you to be offended by it but in terms of how articulately written it is how kind of interesting it is and how much it makes you think it's one of the only things recently that's kind of got me out of my brain haze and has actually got my brain turning again which I really really appreciated so if you do have the time and you haven't read it I'd very very much recommend the power um, and the audiobook version that's available on audio I can contest is just it's great the the lady who reads it is fabulous the last thing that's been making me feel really happy recently is a bit of a random one, so forgive me, but I have become pretty obsessed with watching past episodes of um, Bob Ross on Netflix. Now, 
I, I didn't really know anything about Bob Ross until a friend of mine started talking to uh, me about him a few months ago, I think. And um, for those of you who don't know, in the 80s and 90s, I believe, Bob Ross hosted a programme in the US called The Joy of Painting, in which he would teach people how to paint with his particular technique of painting. And essentially, every episode of The Joy of Painting is Bob Ross painting a picture. <laughs> And I can't tell you how soothing I have found it watching him. For one, he has a really, really lovely, gentle turn of phrase, which is particularly nice when you're not feeling particularly great. But when I haven't been able to be creative and all I've wanted to do is kind of have some energy to channel it into some kind of making of something, to be able to watch someone take a completely blank canvas and create works of art, in half an hour is really, really soothing because you're seeing at least someone else do this and create something out of nothing. And when you don't feel capable of doing that yourself, um, it's just it's just really nice. And again, it's not gonna be for everyone, I get that. But if you suffer from insomnia or have problems being able to fall asleep, again, I think Bob Ross, He's the one. I can't tell you the amount of times recently that if Emrys has been working late, I've popped on an episode of Bob Ross and I have been asleep within about 20 minutes, within about 15 minutes, sometimes longer because I do like seeing how the painting turns out, but he's so soothing and so calming and it's just such a nice just a nice thing to watch. And I don't usually like calling things nice because I think of it as a bit of a non-word, but if you suffer with any of those things or you're feeling a bit glum or you're just feeling a bit sad, honestly, can't go wrong with a bit of Bob Ross. Literally, my obsession has become so much that um, Emrys presented me with present a couple of days ago. He bought me my own little Bob Ross pop figure. <laughs> my little Bob Ross. The joy of painting. So he's joining my pop figure family. But yeah. It's funny the things that we take joy in when life doesn't seem particularly joyful, isn't it? <laughs> okay, my lovely, lovely, beautiful viewers, that is going to be it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode of Inside Number 23. It has been so wonderful spending time with you. And just thank you for your patience, as always, um, in waiting for me and allowing me to have the space to get back to doing this because I already feel feel a hundred times better than I did at the start of this episode. So fingers crossed that means that there will be many more episodes in the near future. If you have enjoyed the video do please give us a thumbs up um, and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept up to date as to when there are new videos on the channel. Um, there is also a little bell icon down there which will notify you every single time a new video comes up on the channel which might be more beneficial for you um, because I don't know how regular these videos will be at the moment like I said, I don't want to push it too hard. Um, I want to be kind, try and continue being kind to myself. Um, so they might be weekly, they might be every two weeks. Who knows? We'll see how we get on. But for now, thank you so much for listening to me um, rabbit on about what's been going on in my life. I hope you all have an incredible week filled with all of the crafting goodness that your hearts can stand and also just just be kind to yourself and if you need that space away just let yourself have it believe me it's beneficial and healing and lovely but for now from me to you have a wonderful week I'm sending you all so much love it's so good to be back with you all again and I will see you all very very soon bye